So we're here at Emirates Stadium for Arsenal versus Liverpool in the WSL and as you can see behind me the fans are already gathering and this is one of the things I think that's been really really special about Arsenal women games in the last few years. It's not just the size of the attendance, it's how engaged everyone is, how excited everyone is and you can see a real fan culture developing around these games and chants for the players and everything like that and this is an organised march by Red and White and Arsenal Women Supporters Group to come to the stadium together and this is one of the things that's really really developed over the last year or so so we're about to kick off the WSL season at home to Liverpool in front of around 53,000 fans should be a record WSL attendance this lot certainly seem excited anyway. So a new WSL season underway here at Emirates Stadium with around 50,000 fans expected. Maybe a slight surprise in the starting lineup with Lotta Wubamoy lining up alongside Jen Beattie at centre half with new signings Amanda Illichter and Leia Kadena on the bench. Katie McCabe will play at right back, which um, probably emphasises the one weak area of the squad. Noel Maritz isn't quite fit enough to start and she's the only recognised right back, but otherwise, um, Russo leading the line, Chloe Lacasse as well, so plenty of new signings, plenty of intrigue and uh, yeah, WSL season underway. It feels like it's been a long time after the World Cup but here it is and everyone's pretty excited about that fact here. So we're halfway through the first half, still nil-nil here but Arsenal tactically very interesting. It looked like Katie McCabe might start at right back but that's not how it's turned out. She's playing as much more of a left wing back and Arsenal are playing kind of a back three but it slides between a three and a four so Steph Catley sometimes is left centre back but sometimes she slides across to left back. It's a tactic that Chelsea use a lot under Emma Hayes actually and something that crucially Chelsea started doing after they'd been under Emma Hayes for a few years and the team had been together a few years so clearly Jonas Eideval feels in his third season like Arsenal have reached a level of tactical maturity to kind of play that hybrid formation. Uh, forcing a lot of corners, a lot of crosses into the box, but Liverpool were playing three at the back as well. So haven't found the breakthrough yet, but it's all Arsenal here at Emirates Stadium. So it's half time here at Emirates Stadium. It's Arsenal nil, Liverpool nil. A real tactical game of cat and mouse. Liverpool, they sometimes start with a back five. They sometimes start with a back four. Usually against the bigger teams, they do a back five. That's what they've done today. But I think Arsenal sprung a little bit of a surprise on them by lining up with wing backs themselves. So Katie McCabe and Chloe Lacasse kind of playing as wing backs. And something you very, very, very often see in the WSL, nearly every single game is one of the goalkeepers going down and forcing a bit of a timeout. It's the Liverpool goalkeeper that did it this time. Arsenal do it frequently as well. And at that point, Matt Beard, the Liverpool coach, called the players over and they changed from a back five to a back four, pushed their left wing back, Taylor Hines, who came through the academy at Arsenal, up the pitch and that's really changed the pattern of this game because Arsenal were well on top early on but since that switch Taylor Hines has pushed Chloe Lacasse back and Arsenal just haven't really had the same stranglehold in the game so I'm anticipating that whether it's a change of personnel or a change of formation or just a little bit of a change of shape that that's what Jonas Eideval will be talking about at half time to try and get that dominance back. Okay beginning of the second half here still nil nil um, really interested to see how Arsenal respond to Liverpool going back to a back four. This happened when the teams played each other last season. Liverpool switched from a back five to a back four, albeit it was already 2-0 to Arsenal when they did that, and Arsenal didn't score again. So they're going to have to find a way through this kind of new fangled Liverpool system. Let's see how they get on. So not, a good so not a good start for the half for Arsenal, they're 1-0 down at the beginning of the second half, Miri Taylor, they got caught in a slight transition moment down the left hand side, Steph Catley putting a tackle in, kind ricochet for Liverpool but from there they were able to get a cut, cut back to Miri Taylor who was all alone in the penalty area and slotted it beyond Manu Zinsberger, big challenge for Arsenal now. So there's 13 minutes to go, Arsenal still 1-0 down, very very bitty game. Lots of Liverpool players going down, getting the physio on, lots of stoppages, which you probably expect. At the same time, Arsenal made some substitutions. Lena Hurtig is on, Victoria Pullover is on, 
trying to change the rhythm of this game. They've caused a little bit of threat from set pieces and they're beginning to find some passes now, but the game's just really, really being broken up. Every time Arsenal attack, a Liverpool player goes down and we get a stoppage. It's very, very difficult for Arsenal to build up any rhythm, but they're going to have to find a way because they've got around 13 minutes plus injury time to find a way to get at least one and preferably two goals in this game. That's full time here and it's Arsenal nil, Liverpool won. A surprise defeat for Arsenal and uh, quite a poor performance as well, it has to be said. Really, really bad start to the season, particularly because the next two games are away at Manchester United and at home to Aston Villa and there's going to be extra pressure on taking six points from those. But I think Jonas Eideval will be disappointed with the performance as much as anything. Arsenal actually started the game quite well. They sprung a bit of a surprise tactically, which Liverpool took some time to adjust to. And and Arsenal really had Liverpool under pressure for 30 minutes or so, but then Liverpool changed their system. And that changed things a little bit, that changed the impetus of the game. Arsenal struggled to create after that, but I was still quite relaxed about that at half-time because I expected there to be some kind of response for Arsenal to do something, whether it was a tweak or just a tweak in positioning. doesn't have to be like a triple substitution or anything, but they, they really didn't and they really struggled to get Liverpool under any kind of pressure and of course they concede a goal and after that Liverpool have got something to hold on to. Liverpool broke the game up really well, made sure that every stoppage was a very, very long one and Arsenal played into Liverpool's hands as well because they were trying to play outside of Liverpool's block, they were going out wide and where Arsenal's passing was just a little bit off they kept losing the ball, they kept giving Liverpool throw-ins, they kept giving Liverpool the reason to stop the game and slow it down. And I think Jonas Eideval will be really disappointed that Arsenal didn't create an awful lot, um, actually from about the 30th minute onwards, but after Liverpool scored, Caitlin Ford had a header that hit the crossbar, there were a couple of corners, but Arsenal didn't really open Liverpool up fairly comfortable afternoon for the Liverpool defence and very disappointing start to the season for Arsenal, albeit in front of a record crowd here at Emirates Stadium of 54,115. So really the one bright spot on the day for Arsenal there.